please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Sin City 2, a Dame to Kill for movie thoughts. I suppose I'll start with Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, pretty much everything about him was was really funny, you know. I'm looking for a Mr. Croning. Dr. Croning, if you please. Okay, so they took my license away. I'm telling you I'm still a doctor, you know, and how much have you got? Forty dollars. Then you'll get for forty dollars. You know, it's just Yeah. Christopher Lloyd's really, really funny still. And the you know the bit with, you know, he he must like popsicles because he uses the, the sticks for, you know, I don't remember the word, but he licks them clean first. <laughs> wow, that's, yeah, and, you know, he walks out of there, not even a thank you. <laughs> yeah, now, uh, actually, I suppose I'll stay on the Johnny story for a bit. I like the whole thing with, you know, the illegitimate Rourke coming back to, you know, it, it touches upon this, this, you know, common theme of illegitimate children wanting acceptance from their, you know, their birth parents and such, and this thing of You know, when it's someone this powerful, you know, when you know when the story starts, at least to those of us who, you know, to whom it's not the first, even if it is the first story, you know, you you quickly get a sense of Senator Rourke is a big deal. You know, he's a very important, very powerful man. So, yeah, trying to match him is, you know. Yeah, that's a pretty big, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, you know, you wouldn't necessarily do that if you weren't at least half a Rourke yourself, and you certainly wouldn't be able to beat him. I, I like how it's never really said, but Johnny is really good at gambling. He wins all the... I told you, I never lose. So maybe they're saying that there's some kind of thing of if you're a rock, even half of one, you have some kind of pull or power. And if that doesn't translate directly to like political power, you know, or you have connections, well, maybe you're just really good with your hands then, you know, so yeah. And I love the twist of, you know, ah, oh, it's not quite the same without your, what was it, your gaming hand, is it? And then he uses the left hand, I'm ambidextrous. <laughs> that was so good, that was a great twist. And again, he wins, and it's this thing of, you know, people will, you know, this, this story will be told, no matter what, it will be told, people will know that a Rourke is still beatable and you know and and then you know senator goes you know ah, and they'll know this part too and he you know plugs him and it's that thing of <laughs> the senator still lost he you know Johnny got what he wanted there's I mean he walked right into a, a room walked right into gambling with Senator Rourke twice. He he knew what he was going in. I don't think that he really, 
you know more, more than more than living more than surviving he wanted to prove that he could beat Rourke that he could be as good as the senator and you know senator daddy and yeah he he accomplished that and it's yeah with without spoiling anything about other works it's not the first time Frank Miller does this kind of story but it's really yeah it's a great theme to go into and it's also this thing of you know can you even actually I may have already said but yeah can can you even defeat a rock if you're not at least half a rock yourself and it's this thing of you know yeah they both mention his mother and yeah the the terms are very different for the the two now i'm not sure yellow bastard had a name before this one here you know they they pretty consistently call him ethan i yeah it's i don't know i guess i guess he he doesn't strike me as an Ethan, neither before nor after the, you know, the whole freakifying yellow bastarding thing. But, yeah, it's... Uh, they, they needed something to, you know, distinguish. You know, you can't call them Junior 1 and Junior 2, so... Yeah, I, I like how, I mean, at first it's just, you know, you have this one little picture on, on the center's desk of, you know, Junior as Yellow Bastard, and it's just this small little, and at first you don't really give it a second thought. Then you see Nancy in the place, and, you know, the center has these big, full shots of Yellow Bastard, and I'm like, so... After he came back and looking like that and, you know, he was going to go on the, the, you know, trying to get revenge on Hardigan and Nancy. And I'm pretty sure he was even wearing that same, you know, in the, in the photos, I'm pretty sure he's wearing the clothes that he was in the first movie. So all of that and then, you know, the senator went, come on, give, I'm going to need a photo of you, son. I just... <laughs> Okay, I guess he's just that sentimental. It's yeah. Now the with the Johnny story, I quite liked the bit with you know, I mean, it's typical Miller to have you know the the woman there so that she can be killed, so that you know, it's this you know, yeah, but. The, the the color use in there was quite nice. That every time we see, I think Marcy was her name, you know, she's she's vibrant. And that is true even once, you know, we see her two cut off hands and the head. It, it was probably good that Johnny left at that point because if they were going to roll every single decapitated body part out, you know, I mean, how many different parts of the torso itself going to be in? So, yeah, that was probably why he, you know, he was giving them a, a break on the whole rolling body parts into view thing. Yeah. I already said in the review, but Power Spoof is awesome in this. Just all the, the villainy, you know, <laughs> and the, yeah. All of it was, was really, really great. Now, I can't believe they didn't do the, the bubblegum song line in, in Dame. I mean, I know you gotta lose some stuff, and that was also the case for the first one, but that was a really funny line. The, the Yeah, I suppose, you know, if, if you've watched the movie, the, yeah, it's it's not a major plot point or anything, so I could spoil in a Dame to Kill for in the comic when he's sitting there, you know, and they're threatening him, the you know, the twins, 
are you know threatening him and Miho's behind him and you know Dwight's sitting there like thinking I should be terrified and I would be if only I could get that bubblegum song out of my head you know yeah now the I suppose that more or less covers Johnny just briefly about I was I didn't quite know what to make of recasting Bob as Jeremy Piven excuse me instead of Michael Madsen I <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not necessarily surprised Madsen didn't come back but yeah, replacing him with Piven, I, I don't know, I will, I didn't mind him in the film, but he is very much, you know, I don't know, I feel like they're, they're both kind of playing it very much the way they would play that character. They're not, you know, Piven isn't trying to do a Michael Madsen impersonation. Now. I was a little surprised about all the ties that this cut when, you know, the comic, Just Another Saturday Night, the night that Marv goes and does, you know, and that's, that's what opens this film, it's Just Another Saturday Night, and in the comic, that is actually the night that Hardikin comes back, and, you know, I... I thought that they were gonna do that, you know, that Marv would see that, you know, I mean, they even have in the first movie the bit where, you know, Marv notices her jumping into Hardigan's arms, and yeah, I feel like they could have gone from there to him walking sullenly out with them in the background or something. They have all three actors, I don't, anyway, and... A Dame to Kill For also very, excuse me, very much ties itself into the hard goodbye. And I don't know, I guess it's it's fine not to, but again, I they probably could have just, you know, yeah, go back and use the same footage even some now. I like how Wendy and Goldie did get some, you know, distinguishing. I mean, when, when they walk in, I mean, we have the Marv line, I guess she was the nice one. In this one, you sort of see, yeah, she kind of is the nice one. Although she still is a bit, you know, <laughs> on the sadistic side. You know, she's, she, they're, they're, it's almost a mob kind of thing, so they have to keep it on, yeah. You know, I mean, they're they're walking in there, you know, Dwight's sitting there, and, and they're like, do we have a sign outside saying wounded Samaritan storage? You know, and I mean, poor Dwight just woke up in, you know, the hospital bed, and it's like, can he even, you know, Dwight, if you can hear me, wiggle your big toe. Now, I'm sorry, they're just, they're, they're too obvious to miss these. Now, I like how the, the core story of A Dame to Kill For is really this classic noir kind of thing of the wife of an important, rich, power, rich or powerful man, you know, yeah, the wife wants him dead, so she seduces a patsy to murder him, and then after that, you know, some of them, it's that she really wants to be with the, the patsy, and in others, it's like here, she just wants him dead and or arrested, not necessarily in that order. And, yeah, it's, 
very much the and you know we we have some recurring themes dwight screws up a lot good cops suicide now i suppose yeah it's a briefly talk you know i mentioned how awesome Ava Green is in this as Ava. In this, I can talk a bit more about what her character is like. You know, this this old Black Widow thing of just you know she's a predator. She destroys men, and you really see it through Mort. You know, very nicely done. And yeah, just deliciously evil, and yeah, m maniacal. It's, it's really cool. She does absolutely perfect. Now, and you know, whether she's like powerful and commanding or submissive, you know, yeah, she, she really sells it all. I suppose that more or less covers With them to kill for, I do of course have to mention. In the first one, Dwight was played by Clive Owen, and it was you know he had a new face. So, and indeed, Clive Owen pretty well looks like the Dwight with a new face. And then you have this Dwight with the old face, and the thing is, at the end of this story, he has the new face. And they didn't bring back Clive Owen. They gave Josh Brolin a Clive owen -y face. And it just looks silly. It just, it's the kind of thing where if only they hadn't made the, the follow-up already so that it could just be, you know, if it was just Josh Brolin with an altered face. But... Josh Brolin with a Clive Owen style face. Yeah, that just looks silly. That's now. I suppose that more or less covers. I've already gone in, in depth with Johnny's story to go into more about about a dame to kill for also, you know, we, we start with Dwight very afraid of letting go and very much a, yeah, basically if he, he's desperate to hold on to even the sorry excuse for a life that he is leading, you know, and when Ava comes back in, I mean, you know, Ava was one of the things that could make him make big mistakes. Uh, you know, she could really take, you know, yeah, completely entrance him. And, you know, he keeps trying to, excuse me, he keeps trying to push her away, threatening her. And... Excuse me. Yeah. And ultimately, he, he does give in and follow up on, you know, and yeah, once, you know, she, she's the femme fatale. Once he has, once he's interested in her, it just keeps moving, you know, towards the inevitable. We know that it's going to go bad. It's badly, yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to work out too well. And basically, by the end of it, you know, he has, he's embraced the monster that earlier, it was like, I cannot let the monster out. Now he's let it out and it... You know, when when we meet him in the first movie, 
in the big fat kill he's perfectly willing to kill he's very yeah he's he's much more cynical and cold than we meet him than than when we first meet him here so he's embraced the monster and he is you know what he had of a life before is now gone you know and it's it's this thing of he wanted to feel the fire just one more time and he did and now it's yeah he's you know basically the only reason he's not dead is that he is you know he has a new face they don't know you know if yeah if the police knew who he was yeah you know death row and it's a yeah basically she she does what she always does she ruins men's lives he survives but she wins she destroyed his life the only he he doesn't stop her from destroying his own life he stops her from destroying any more lives we see his life and mort's life destroyed by her so it's this thing of yeah it's it's there's very much he changes as a character and we explore him as a character and some of the same is true of johnny's story and that's where i end up with nancy's story just briefly just to just throw it out there i'm not sure i really got what the the whole biker gang it seemed like they were just there so that you know marv and nancy could quickly get their hands on guns and vehicles just throwing that out there and and i i feel like marv with dual spas 12s it almost it's almost just kind of too big it's it's expendables e kind of just the thing with marv is he's a badass even without a gun giving him two huge guns just kind of defeats the purpose think about how much he does without a gun without firing a single shot in just yeah with that said the the crossbow is pretty badass but but yeah the the thing with Nancy's story is she starts out wanting to get revenge on Senator Rourke. She ends up getting revenge on Senator Rourke. And there aren't even any consequences. It's pure wish fulfillment. They, I have no idea how they're going to get away from there secretly, how they're going to, you know. Marv says, oh, we can't leave any witnesses. If it was that easy for them to discover that Nancy was probably who Rourke Jr. wanted and, you know, that whole thing, then wouldn't it be just as easy? Yeah, I just... And, and again, without spoiling anything, this is not the first time we've seen a major... You know, I'm just going to leave it with, think about the endings of the stories from the first one and compare the the consequences both the amount and the severity of the consequences that yeah that resulted from and and here there's just nothing she kills him and that's it and yeah there's just there's nothing especially there it's not even like she destroys herself because i mean We've seen stories that take place after it. We know that she she is fine later. So it's just this thing of Yeah, she she doesn't really lose anything seemingly and I'm really not sure about you know this the scars, how that quite works out with you know did she go see Dr. Koenig too or yeah. I suppose um, again it's it's really not Alba particularly. I thought she did pretty decently and yeah, it's 
just the the yeah there there isn't really any there there's not really particularly any change and there are no consequences and it's a it's, I also just feel like I liked it the way it the way it was left before you know yeah I like the ending of that yellow bastard I like I like it left like that. I'm not saying Nancy shouldn't appear in other stories. I'm not even saying she shouldn't have a story of her own like she had here. I'm saying when that story is specifically following up on the whole Hardigan thing, you gotta do something better with it than this. This just makes it feel like, well, I guess you really didn't have to suicide then. Really, they, they should have, you know, Kind of gone gone over this together, brainstormed. I'm sure that you know. Yeah, brainstormed rather than brain blown. It just. Yeah. Now the the. The 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 bit where she shoots the mirror was you know clever enough, and then he gets the drop on her. Now. I did think it was a little interesting how Hardigan's ghost sort of, at times it seems like she can hear him, but at other times it's just like he's he's there. You know, he he says this. You know, hell is watching the people you love suffer or something like that. You know, not being able to do anything. So apparently he really is a ghost and just, you know, watching that. And then when he appears in the mirror, you know, Rourke, you know, is, is surprised, shocked. And then, you know, Nancy is able to kill him. And yeah, it's... I mean, it, it's not like, it's not really inconsistent or anything, it's just, is an interesting way they did that, that, yeah, and, you know, the whole ghost thing is, you know, being haunted by the memory of someone, yeah, working in a noir story. I think... That more or less covers it. Yes. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.